record button. Let's paint a shield. So, got most of her painted. There's still some cleanup to do. Um, some little blending and things, but paint the back of her arm. So, the whole back of the arm needs to be cleaned up. Uh, and some blending on the cloth and some adjustments made here. But it's pretty close. Uh, these little buckles and things need to be done. But let's let's work on let's work on the uh, shield. So we've got pretty it's pretty standard kite shield. I'm going to go with a like quarter design. So I think I'm going to do this bottom left or bottom right in blue and the top left in blue. I'm not too worried about getting the lines right at the moment because I can clean up the other side when I go to do the other quarters. So really I just want to get a nice base coat down. Uh, I use I use Chimera and Vallejo mostly. Well, this one's called a kite shield because it's kind of shaped like a kite. There's also a heater shield, a buckler, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot. So I want to make sure that this cross is right here. Really, the names don't matter that much. Um, just helps for when explaining. Okay, so we didn't get a great base coat to start, but I let it completely dry. You see, you can still see how there's like a, a little bit of light reflecting. It's because it's not quite completely dry so now it's dry right it is important to let your base coat dry completely before applying the next coat if you it really doesn't matter how thick you apply the paint you can apply a very heavy layer right as long as you work kind of fast and let it dry in between coats, you'll end up with a nice even surface. Hey, so I want to make sure that's dry. And then I can apply the next layer. If you don't uh, wait for it to dry completely, what happens is you get um, part of the layer has dried, or part of the you can lift up the un 
the undried paint and that's why you get those like kind of nasty uh, marks okay so this is going to be a pretty simple highlight and shading because the shield is quartered and we're got slightly more light from above okay then i'm going to grab A bit of a mixture of, I want something tannish, not pure white, because this is on the on the back in shadow. Um, let me see if I can find something just tan on my palette, or I can go. I can just mix something, like grab some yellow ochre. And uh, a light gray, something like this. Okay, so just two layers, and it's got full, even coverage. I didn't really thin the paint at all. Okay, I'll mix just a little bit of this brown I was using in there to tone it down just a touch. Okay, I'm gonna find the halfway point on this uh, I what this is called. It's like the metal stud in the middle. It has a name. So now I'm being a little more careful to just make a crisp line. And this will also, you know, take more than one layer. Evening, everyone. Professor Grimm, Jared, Splendor Brush, Turbo Waffle, Steve, other Steve. Oh, oui. Estevez. Hola. Uh, or, no, you're... Portuguese. It's a uh... you know I don't actually know hello in Portuguese. Shiny Mew paints. Okay, so I'm using that ridge. There's a ridge there to tell me where the change in the quartering is. I'll let that dry. This other side is almost dry. Metalovich, hello. Oh, well then, hola. Here's a question, Rui. How close I understand that uh, Galician and Portuguese are kind of like that Galician might actually be closer to Portuguese than it is to Spanish. How similar are they? Like, are they mutually intelligible?
for anyone that doesn't know, Galician is like the Galicia is the like region of Spain that's north of Portugal. A little corner. Okay, I'll clean up the uh, the edge in a second. So this is interesting. That line's not perfectly straight, but the shield's going to be at an angle, so it doesn't matter that much. So they're close, but you, but it's not like, it's closer than Spanish, but it's not exact. Thanks, Dom. Hey, okay, pretty close because this is we're painting. Uh, a white, right? Or a off white. We're gonna have to. It might take a another layer than than what it would take with, you know, just doing the blue. Okay, I'm gonna get a little closer so I can see. I'm gonna remove that because I had some kind of dust or something in it. I just want to make sure that edge is nice and crisp. I don't care about the the big stud thing in the middle because I'm going to go back over top of that anyways. There we go. Nice solid base coat. And because there's a little bit of an angle to it, the other side, right? We want this one to be a little brighter than the other one.
Yeah, it made a little mark. That's all right. We're going to put some weathering and stuff on the shield anyways. Uh, do I have any trouble? Okay, so the question for anybody watching is a while ago you mentioned you study classical art and try and apply it to miniature painting. Do you have any trouble translating what you learned since most of them worked with oil paints? Uh, there are, I mean, if you're strictly talking about technique, then yes, there are, um, some problems, you know, like there are certain techniques that just aren't going to work with acrylic. But the the general principle of like how they use composition and light, um, color, all of those things apply no matter what your medium is. Okay, we got two good, two solid uh, base coats, right? I think this, so if we want this side to look like this side, this is not quite bright enough. So we're gonna go a little, we're gonna add a little bit of this white to the blue. And we're gonna go just a touch brighter on, on this blue portion of the shield. This is going to dry darker than than it looks here. Something like that. No, I I'm not an oil paint guy. Uh, it, it's a little slow. Uh, it you can do certain things really fast with it, but it's slow drying, and I the way I layer and stuff is that's not really. Oil paints are not for me. Okay. Now, once that's dry, I'm going to take some of the blue. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do something else. Let's take the white. White in air quotes. And create a uh, a mark for a freehand, right? We're going to repeat it on the other side. Okay, something like that. Notice a lot of Warhammer 28 millimeter focused painters really care about working in super thin layers to get the best possible finish. Is that really only a 
smaller figure thing. I know you work much thicker. That's a, it's just a misunderstanding of the medium, right? Because that's a thick layer, right? Does it look, I mean, other than some brushstroke stuff that you can kind of see, but that's going to get covered over when we apply more layers. That's literally just like the finish that you're seeing. Um, so it's just a misunderstanding of the medium. It's not so, it doesn't have much to do with the actual uh, like paint itself, right? Because I apply a thick layer. As long as you let it dry, it levels. And now I can apply a glaze over top of the whole thing that's very smooth. And those, those brush strokes will go away. Now there's some dust that you don't want. See, when it dries, get an even layer. So there's one particular thing that I don't like about oil paints is they're very uh, shiny, which creates problems when you're trying to hmm, that that shininess to them really can cause some unwanted reflections and things. So. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some of this guy, some of this guy. Okay, you gotta see all right, but so where do we want the, the transition? So we're gonna make another guide mark here. We're going to mirror the same thing down here. I'll let you guys figure out what we're doing. And it probably needs to be a bit wider than that. Right. These are just guides. We can clean it up later. I said I'm probably going to apply a little bit of weathering to the shield too. Okay. So we have those marks. And then you've got a shape like this. Hey, figured it out. And then another shape like that. All right, so we're just repeating the just repeating that shape, right? Trying to create a little upside down whatever.
Fluidity is really important when you're doing free hands like this. You you really want the paint to like flow nicely off the brush. Okay, the bottom. I have to look at a picture of this thing because I don't remember. I don't know exactly what it looks like. I could probably draw one from memory, but it's not going to be exact. Okay. So we have another smaller version of that shape. Notice I'm pulling to the middle. I'm starting with the, the end so that I can get a really nice sharp point on it. And then I know, based on the illustration, that they start like here and here, right? Or they end there and there. So I'm just going to make a mark. Bop, bop. Right? Those dots are guides. And then they come up. So they come off of the this shape. Right, and then they curve in, so they come about halfway up the uh, the leaf shape. Yeah, that's the New Orleans Saints logo. <laughs> that's what you're painting. Can you imagine? So I'm trying to be clean, but if it's not perfect, that's okay, right? Because I can always use the blue that I have to paint the negative, right? So if I accidentally go over, that's okay. I can just paint a blue line across. I'll show, I'll, in fact, I'll show you, right? So I go like this. Whoops. Oh, I went too far. Oh, no. However, will I fix that? Oh, I just grabbed some of the blue. And just paint the line back in. Just paint the negative. Okay. All right, and then the last little thing is to do these guys. So these curl off the bottom. Right? 
like so. Ta-da! So, it's not quite perfect. We can clean it up a little bit. Doing the same deal. I just come in, get a nice straight line. I want to get these all kind of the same thickness. I want this kind of rounded on the end. This to come to a bit more of a point. Right, there we go. A fleur de lis. Hi, Jonas. Cool. Now I got to do the other one. Yeah, that's my big my biggest recommendation when anytime you do uh, freehand like this is create little landmarks for yourself, right? Little guide. And then you can as long as you hit that point, then you can make small adjustments AC miniatures hello Welcome, everyone. I'll give everybody a second. Good evening. Thanks for waiting. What were you doing tonight? Hi, Jet. British Bob, hello. Okay. Slowly losing your mind on the trim of Horus. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, this piece, if we're working on this, this lady. Oh, let me zoom out so you guys can see it. Working on this lady. This goes on her back.
doing some some free handing on the shield. Right. No big deal. Easy enough. Thank you. Which which horse are you painting? Ascended or the other one? The the original one or the uh the newer? Yeah. Ascended. It's a cool model, but yeah, man, that is uh that's a lot of trim. All right, so see how I can paint the negative, right? I want these points super sharp. Boom, I just grabbed the blue I used before. Just close it in. Thanks, British Bob, for the prime. Appreciate it. Brush looker, hello. Wait, British Bob. British Bob. Oh, that's weird. It's like capitalizes your name differently when you subbed versus when you just followed. It's bizarre. Well, have a good one. Thanks for rating. Have a good night. Okay. Okay. So. Pretty, pretty simple, right? <laughs> Nothing too fancy. Now. Let's play around with some damage. Some damage. All right, let's let's assume let's assume that the shield is painted all blue first and then they paint the white on top, right? We can do a little so what you want to do here is you want super 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 thin or or nice and fluid, right? We want to make sure it's flowing really well and we want to make sure we have a really nice point so that when we can come in and just like see, create these little surface scratches she uses her shield you know It's very easy to overdo, right? Sometimes you sometimes you want just little marks, and sometimes you want bigger marks. You know, these could be not even like from getting slashed at. This this could be just like walking around, and it just she's wearing it on her back, and it bumps into things. You know. Okay, something like that, and then we'll continue that on the, uh, we can do something like this, right? Maybe it went across the design also.
Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this smoke, which you've never used to smoke before. Smoke. It's kind of more like an ink. It's very uh, transparent. I'm going to get a lot of it off. And then around, I'm just kind of focusing mostly on the, uh, around the edge. But I can apply kind of a filter across the whole area, but I'm pulling towards the edge. All right, and that's going to create some, like, color depth. And so I'm using it as a glaze. And if I go too heavy, while it's still wet, I can use a clean brush to kind of wipe some of it away. You know, so it's dirt or whatever build up. I can even tap it with my finger a little bit. That'll kind of make it a little more random and Okay, same thing over here, All right? Pulling towards the edge. Not too heavy. And I can do the same thing. I can kind of tap a little bit kind of lifts parts of it, lets other parts show through. Now, I don't want fingerprints, so if I saw a fingerprint, I can kind of just rub at it, lift it a little bit, leave like little stains and things. It's just paint and water, yeah. Bye, Mom. Okay, once that's dry, now I can come back and do some more surface level scratches and dots. It's like, oh, okay, well this is just like parts where the, uh, the dirt and grime has been rubbed off. Something like that. We're not trying to create, like, I don't want, like, super deep scratches, but... Okay. Pretoria Gaming, hello. All right, a little bit at this top section. I'm just going to glaze a little here. 
just to give a little light and get this closer to see I'm pulling towards this other area just want the two tones to be a little bit closer together okay Now we take some black. And carefully, carefully redefine that trim. Take your time. Take your time. This is a relatively uh, flat surface, so it doesn't need a ton of contrast like some other parts of the figure. Okay, so we get the black outline. Very good. Have a, a nice uh, shield. Okay, let's mix up a dark gray. Now, I don't think I want this quite as heavy of a steel effect as the, uh, the armor is. But we need to think about how it's going to be on our back. So it goes, I think it goes like this. Probably should have checked beforehand. Yeah, it goes like that. Yep. So, we know that if this piece, this will be facing towards the light. And so that's where our main highlight point's going to be. Let me zoom in a little for you guys. Okay, something like that.
Now we begin to define this area. Hi, useless wizard. Whoa. Okay, let's grab a little more. So really my goal here is to just create that really thin line to leave that black separated. Right, so just leaving that thin black line. I'm going to come around. And this may look bright now, but it's going to get a whole lot brighter. I can use a little bit of the smoke to adjust the color here. If I want like a little bit more of an iron feel to it than, than uh, steel. Can, I can add just a little bit of brown to this blue-gray to kind of change the tonality. And here I'm also not... I'm creating kind of like dots and lines. I'm not trying to like make a perfect blend. I'm instead more interested in, in the texture. My mushroom 3D, welcome. Keep pushing the reflections. Make the edge kind of irregular by using little dots. This is essentially if you if you uh, saw the goblins from from Black Sun. This is effectively how I did the uh, the like beat up iron. It's more just about how you apply the layers and how heavy of a reflection you make. All right, so here in the shadows. I can grab a little bit of this brown. So instead of like a pure black, you get this like warmer brown tone in the in the shadow. The more beat up a metal is, the less like non-metallic it acts and more like a regular material. Hi, John Tin Fool. Yes, the Adrian Smith Goblins. Wait, dude, the Turbo Waffle Steve, are you asking for confirmation or are you asking what they are? Because if you don't know what they are, I can show you the figures. Okay, so just 
Little dots, little nicks and scratches. Right. Just keep building the light. It's still going to get like a nice shine on it. It's just not going to be as contrasty. Okay, something like that. Then we can add another little bit of shine to the bottom. We want this to feel rounded. Okay, so something like such. And then I can make small adjustments Oh, make sure I'm on camera. There we go. Okay. In there. And then we got to go up even more. So we're, we're going to grab some of the white and the pale, this like pale gray tone. And this will be our kind of final highlight, right? So I don't want that final highlight to be like a perfect dot because this is kind of a scratchy surface. So I let it, uh, Give it some irregularity. Maybe there's a little ding right there. Yeah. Okay. So it looks metallic-y, but it's not, it's not like crazy, you know? It's not a high polished steel. In with a little like brown and come back and make some really subtle darker sections Feels like a small dent, you know? Something just hit it right there and made a nice little kind of notch in it.
achieves the effect we're looking for. Croton Hurst. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the, uh, the outside. Actually find this a little easier because we can use the edge of the brush a little bit more. The side of the brush, you know. We get the major reflection point there and then we'll have one on the opposite side. Who did it? PB pill? P pipe pill? Okay, this is the part I need to be careful because I want basically just that that sharp edge where the two pieces separate. So being careful to just paint that edge highlight. Well, it's not a highlight. That edge line. And if I get some like irregularities, that's fine. I'm just gonna let those be part of it, you know? Okay. So. Make sure I get this edge nice and defined. I'm going to come back in with brighter colors anyways, so. Okay, uh, real quick here, I want to add a little touch just for, just for, uh, design sake. What is that? Capicar bone. Hello. This black line got a little thick here. I can come in with a little bit of the blue just to try and sharpen that edge some. Same with the white if we feel like that got too too thick. Nashin. Hello. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. Hey, Koisas. Mm. Okay. Same deal with the white. Doesn't it have to be crazy? Just, I really want that black line to be nice and thin.
that flank approach where you paint one side and the other. you paint the black line first then you thin it from one side thin it from the other until you got a nice nice thin line well happy to hear that nation i'm glad i'm glad i can help can provide a little bit of information makes me very happy i am always excited when uh Someone tags me on Instagram or whatever and is like, I use, I was painting this thing inspired by this tutorial or Eric painting whatever. I'm like, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it. Hey, Jason. Hello. How are you? You missed a good conversation last week, Jason, where someone was like trying to give me crap as usual for licking my brush. And I was like, did you know that it's like that paint goes through more rigorous testing than food does? They're like, I don't know, I don't believe you. I'm like, yeah, dude, uh, it's not like I know anybody who makes paint or anything. <laughs> I did hand paint the shields. They're, they're, uh, I, that's one of the first things we did. Uh, if you want... You can always go back and watch the replay of the stream later, like on my YouTube. Ah, plug, plug in the YouTube channel, where you can go and find all the previous streams. And if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe. I'm so good at this. <laughs> Hashtag pro streamer. <laughs> Oh, ring the bell, dude. Eh, nah, you don't have to ring the bell. I don't I don't think Honestly like the uh you see those things it's like seventy eight percent of my audience is not subscribed. I have like the opposite, where it's like most of the people watching on YouTube are subscribed. What I should be is saying is share it with your friends or something. Trust me when I say it. 
that that nothing in in uh, the trace amounts of paint that you get after washing your brush in water. There's probably it's probably there's probably worse stuff in my paint cup, like from just being an old dirty paint cup than there is uh, anything in the paint. Thanks, Rui Estevez. Obrigado. Huh? Yeah, you got another. You got another Portuguese, Portuguese in the uh, in the chat. Well, how come I don't see any of the Portuguese people at any of the shows, huh? You guys need to get, ah, uh, see those difference. Well, it's not really popular too many other places or more popular than too many other places than it is in Spain. Spain is like very popular for miniature painting. Maybe only uh uh Poland. It's pretty popular in Poland. They have a very strong miniature painting community. Doms, I only speak English and a very basic amount of Spanish. And most of my Spanish vocabulary is about uh, paint. So Okay, so we want these two to match, right? So this has the same curve. So this final, this main light needs to go here. Right, needs to follow the same reflection. You can go quite bright with it, it's fine. I know how to say thanks in Portuguese because I worked with a Brazilian guy from Sao Paulo. Yeah, that's what I said. I said obrigado early. Obrigado.
No, he didn't teach me any curse words. But I know them in Spanish. Well, Castilian. I know a few in... Mexican Spanish also. STX NTC. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. So there's a word in Spanish, in Castilian, as in Spain Spanish, that means to pick up. To pick up. In, uh, In Latin American, like Mexican Spanish, it has a very different meaning. Well, you can normally tell. Just by inflection, when you're getting cursed at. And if they start throwing around the word madre a lot. Yeah, nope, don't have that one. Can't read that one, guy. But thank you, welcome. Appreciate the follow. Okay, that's probably about good enough. Don't have to get too fancy with it. Let's try and just get a nice line on this side. Uh, for what? I mean, right now I'm using a size one, but I also have a size four. And that's another size four. I have multiple size four. I really like size four, actually. Size three and four are like my favorite. That's that's like the sweet spot for me. Um, one is like good for doing, you know, I mean, really tiny stuff.
Okay. So, let's just check how it looks on her back. How's it look? Looks fine to me. So, still have some work to do on the shoulder and... Uh, yeah, you can't see a whole lot of the inside of the shield, huh? We got, we're going to have to do something with the inside of the shield, like over her shoulder. But you can't see much more of it down there than that, so... Also, a lot of it's going to be in shadow. Is this a full model or bust? This is a bust. That is, that is the whole model. It cuts off right there. I figured, while well, I was, I, I walked past it, so I figured I'd bring it upstairs so I can show it. But next week, when, when the, the night lady is finished, we're going to start a new project from Mascon's Miniatures. The, uh, I believe it's just called The Fighter. So we're going to start this guy. Any early plans for a paint scheme? Yeah, I think I'm going to paint him like Justin Gaethje. If anybody is familiar with who Justin Gaethje is. Uh... But, that's gun miniatures, if anybody wants to follow along on, on the project. Let me see if I can't find a link. Oh, Mark, your website is loading very slow. Mark, your, your, your site doing okay there, guy? Oh, there it goes. Uh, but if anybody wants to pick up the figure for themselves so they can follow along, there's, there's a link. So they... You too can paint your fighter. It also comes with a great tutorial from Mark. So. There's that. All right. Throw this on here. Let's paint the back of the shield real quick. Basically, just have to paint this top half. Let me get a little bit of this so I can get this blue blue tack off the bottom. Okay, let's mix up a nice brown.
paint the inside of the shield. We don't have to go super heavy contrast on this because it's all basically in shadow anyways. But the idea here is I want to create a kind of wood texture. So I'm just going to paint some like vertical lines. They don't have to be perfect. Wood grain does not uh, have like perfect spacing or anything. So some lines can be thicker, some can be thinner. We're just going to keep building the texture on top of each other. Also, some wood has tighter grain, some has thinner grain. I'm not going for any specific look. Okay, so something like that. Hi, Doug. Now we'll just keep mixing a lighter version of this. As I go lighter, I'm going to just continue to create kind of thinner lines of grain that build on top of each other. Right. Oh, something along those lines. Just keep building on top. Artichoke dip. Uh, first time tuning in live. What are your painting goals for the year? You know, that's an interesting question. I don't know if I have any specific goals this year. I've got some, I've been trying some new things. Um, between this lady and another figure I'm working on that you guys will hopefully see pretty shortly. Um, and then the fighter. Uh, I've had some interest in 
more realistic portraiture on figures. I mean, I paint a lot of like orcs and stylized figures. So I, I think I think working on some more portraiture stuff is is pretty fun. Uh, I guess that's kind of one of my my goals. I guess I don't know if I consider it like a goal or just something I'm interested in. Um, but I'm always trying to like you know learn new things and whatever those things can I can take and adjust to to my style of painting is is cool. I don't have any like oh, I want to win this competition or do anything like that. I, I feel like I've met those kind of goals now. I mean, I will, I will compete uh, this year, but it's, it's not like something that I'm specifically like, oh, I need to do this or that, whatever. Okay, uh, so we've got some some general rough wood grain. Let's come in and enhance a few of these lines a little more. The more you just layer this stuff on top of each other, the more uh, depth to the the grain. I will be at. Adepticon, Nova Open, Contrast, SMC, Monty. Okay, I'll just keep building up. Like I said, I don't want super high contrast here. I do want this to be just like relatively dark overall. You can start to add a little more color. with a bit more yellow ochre. That's a wood, right? Now, I'm going to come in with some of the smoke and like the black. And here's where I'll come in and kind of divide the shield into planks like they had to join it together. You don't need super thick, dark lines. It's really like when wood gets joined together, the only really way you can tell that wood has been uh, joint, like glued together is because the, the grain changes from one piece to the other. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of making these vertical lines. And then I'll adjust the grain a little bit on one side or the other. Adepticon Nova contrast with a K, which is in Warsaw. SMC and Monty, yes. Uh, J -J 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 H Joan. I'm just gonna go Joan. Chuas and Vesio. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Welcome. 
Okay, so I've kind of created some vertical lines here to just give me like a rough idea. And now I can have some parts of the grain that kind of like curve one way or the other. to create a, uh, a sense that there's like different planks. That's you, thanks for the prime, appreciate it. And what I'll do, is just kind of create a glaze like this, and just go down, maybe up, you know, just to divide these. Wait, Doug, thanks for the prime, man. Hola, bienvenido. Welcome. <laughs> Zampanov, wow, look at the... Thanks for the gifted subs, man. Appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, missed out on my OSL class again. <laughs> Felt the need to represent for the old Suncoast crew. What? Who am I? Who am I talking to? Ah, Mr. Ryan Bartz. You know, Ryan, I have a uh, buddy, his name's Stu, and he remembers you from Suncoast at Military Circle. He's like, he used to come into Military Circle and he was like, oh, you guys worked there? Do you remember this dude who, who worked there? He was like the nicest guy. I'm like, yeah, that's Ryan. Everybody loved Ryan because... Even though Ryan was always late, let me, let me tell you guys uh, a little thing. Ryan should have been fired like 10 times for being perpetually late to work, but everyone liked him too much. All the customers liked him. Just too nice of a guy. All right, all right. Well, thanks everyone. One to look out for has followed, appreciate it. What are you doing now? Ryan, what you been up to? For those that don't know what Suncoast is, by the way, Suncoast was a, uh, it was like a GameStop, but for DVDs, for movies. It made me really good at that game where people go like, hey, you remember that movie with the guy who was in this other movie? 
where you can figure out movies based off of very vague explanations. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't need a lot, right? It's just, we're just trying to create like a something there, you know? No, not like a Blockbuster. Blockbuster was a rental store. This was a place you buy it. The Adams. So we eventually, like the, the company went, eventually went under. Because um, it turns out Netflix and stuff kind of killed physical media, which I heard recently Best Buy, like, actually stopped carrying physical movies. Uh, so anyways, we were going out of business. And they sold us off to a wholesaler, which is basically like this company buys all of the the product that the that the store has. And they're like, all right, clearance everything and whatever's left over, we're just going to go stick in a warehouse somewhere. Tony Ganim. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for following. Uh, so, they would... What we did... Well, the, the whole store was covered in, in like, TVs and stuff. Because um, we would play movies, like, throughout the store. So we would bring in a PS2. This tells you how long ago this was. I'm giving away my age here. Uh, and we would just play, like, fighting games and stuff while we were working. Because we didn't have any... We no longer had inventory or anything. We didn't know if we had anything actually in stock. Uh, we just were like, yeah, we, you know, if we've got a movie, it's over on the shelf somewhere. Um, but because we didn't have inventory, we would occasionally do some bad things for, bad for the company that bought us out, not bad for the customer. For the customers that we liked, we were like, oh, this... $40 Criterion Collection Akira Kurosawa movie. Yeah, that's a $2 copy of uh, this used copy of, I don't know, some movie that they made like $9 million of. Just be like, yeah, there's enjoy your 95% discount. So, so people definitely walked out of that store with like, Eight hundred dollars in DVDs for like twenty bucks. Oh man, some people had walked out with some serious seasons full of anime. Yeah, I'm going to need all of these anime box sets. Was the good old days.
See you, Jared. Remember after I moved to Illinois, I saw your art on Adult Swim? Yeah. Oh, that did happen. If anybody's uh, super curious about that, their uh, Adult Swim used to do, like, the bumps in between shows. And I don't know who did it. Somebody just, like, randomly submitted this, like, drawing I did of... Uh, death clock to the to the cartoon network and it like got on one of the bumps there's some like website that archived them all or you can try and find my deviant art page it's on there too yeah How long have I been painting for? Well, miniatures I've been painting for 15 years or something. Um, but I've been doing art since I was a kid. I've talked about this before, but I, I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was like really young. Uh, and it turns out that it is a uh, very difficult that is an extremely competitive field to get into like maybe one of the most you might have a better chance of becoming a like NFL player than you do becoming a uh, a like penciler for Marvel Hello. Uh, I'm attending my first convention this week, LVO, to take painting classes. Also going to enter my first painting competition. Must admit, I'm pretty excited and nowhere near the level of yourself and the pros, but it's my journey. Hey, you got to start somewhere. I entered my first painting competition in 2017. It lock and load the uh, miniature painting or the the uh, convention for Privateer Press. That was my first like serious piece I ever did. Actually, I haven't. Uh, it's not very good. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Like, you guys would probably be like, oh, it's so good. But I see all the flaws in it. Got a lot better. Thanks, Vessio. Tony, did I say Tony? Hi, Tony. Uh... This is not the new one. This is the old one. I have the new one too. Uh, there's two different versions of the new one. One's like thinner than the other one. I like the slightly thinner one better. You randomly got followed by Monty Moore last year. That's cool. Let me see if I, let me see. Ron L M L and Dagger Dagger 
Okay. Yeah. Hello. Let's see. Where's let's, let's look at my first ever. I can show you the one that one. Okay. Here we go. You ready? So you guys can be like, oh, that's good. I don't think it's that good. It's okay. The NMM kind of sucks. So this is my first ever miniature competition figure. And yeah, it's all right, but... There's a big, there's a, a big difference in level between that and, and this. You know? So. Yeah, the roll of the gauntlet's like really bad. This, that barely even looks like metallic. Uh, so that was my first ever competition figure. And this was the one I did the following year. Oh, come on. And yeah, that's all right. I don't like, I don't dislike it. It's good. It's pretty smooth and stuff, but. So that's the one I did the following. This is the one I did the following year. John and Mirol TTV. Hello, welcome. Uh, but yeah, once again, a little bit of a difference in level. Decept Deceptic? Hello. You, you spied me in the new, uh, War Painter Fanatic video? I haven't watched it. Is, that's the the new Army Painter stuff. I didn't clear that. Used my likeness. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. They're, they're good guys. I have used those paints. They're pretty nice. They dry a little slow for me, but uh, in general, I think they're they're quite good. They're really good if you like wet blending, like if you if you're a if you're a wet blender. Then I, then I can highly recommend them. Me, that's not really one of my favored techniques, so. Oh, man. All right. Well, the shield's coming along. Do you guys have any questions? We're, good. We're getting kind of... There's still, like, some cleanup to do on her. But we're getting pretty close to the end of this, of this project. Yeah, there's, like... Probably some, some, like, refinement I'll have to do 
off stream just because I can see better. But. When I'm not painting on camera. So that goes like that, yeah. Get rid of all that blue and grab all this brown. The brown brown and black. Thanks, Mini Mancer. I'm glad this one has been interesting for you guys. Uh, this, this is probably one of the longer ones we've done in terms of like the number of sessions. Uh, I know I said at the beginning like, hey, I want to show you more how I like really paint if I'm not painting for stream, like I'm just taking my time and Really trying to push some of the refinement and stuff. All right, I think it'll be easier to finish that when it's actually on the model. You just realized this video, the video of this figure on YouTube is what helped paint the faces of my two comp entries. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear it was helpful. Um, yeah, so, okay. So what other little parts do we have to do? How would you approach a similar lady's skin tone that's more purplish undead, completely different than how you started this one? Uh, actually, the what's it called might be helpful for you to watch. There's a video that I did on YouTube called, of Shiv. She has like a very pale skin tone. Um, and you just, uh, so that one might be interesting. Uh, and in that case, like it's, it's really about just like making very subtle, like changes in color. It doesn't, it does not take a lot to like of purple or whatever to give someone a like, that dead appearance, okay? So Subtlety is a good thing when doing stuff like that. All right, I'm trying to tell, yeah, I think that's supposed to be like a leather. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing we did with the wood because this is mostly in shadow. You don't have to use a lot. It can be pretty dark brown. It's also facing away, like, so I'm just gonna kind of block it in. Uh, 
Uh, have I dabbled in oils or would I for fun? No, I'm not a, I'm not an oil guy. I've painted canvas with oils. For me, the medium's a little slow for miniature painting. It's also very shiny, like tends to be very glossy, which is not something I particularly want on my figures. Uh, the reason you don't have to worry about that too much on a canvas, and you actually get a better depth of color with a, with a more glossy paint than you do with a matte paint. Um, but because it's uh, that shiny quality to it, it tends to uh, like blow out where you want your highlights and everything. And that, that I can find that can be a, a bit of a problem for me. Like I want to be very specific about where I place all my lights. Now you can mat, you can varnish it afterwards, but. Uh, during the actual painting process, it can be, it can be a, a pain. We got to do the back of the sword here. Nothing too crazy. We don't really need to do the back of the blade at all. You can't you're not going to be able to see it. It's way too close to the uh, the figure's body. But in areas like this. This stuff you would be able to see from from certain angles. So just come in and paint a few lights. Doesn't need a lot just to give some impression of reflections. The Quillon Quillon. The Quillon. Le Quillon. Here I go annoying the French again. I don't think James exclusively uses oils. That doesn't sound correct. I mean, I know he uses oils, but I don't think it's exclusively. I know Carrillo will also use oils for certain things, but then he typically finishes with acrylics. They definitely have their uses. It's just, you know, 
what kind of effect you're going for, what sort of finish you want. I'm also, you know, I'm also not telling anyone to not use something, you know? Use whatever tools you're comfortable with. Uh, and anyone that takes a hard stance on like, no, you shouldn't use that is full of it, and uh, I wouldn't trust their opinion anyways. Use this because it works for me. You should use what works for you. Only a Sith speaks in absolutes. A boss. I always expect you to come up with, with the, the vocabulary, uh, Mini Mancer. Thanks, J Mango. Oh, Magno. J Magno. And I missed Magic Howls also at some point. Sorry. Welcome. Mindwork Studio guy. <laughs> you mean uh, Matteo? Deo Midi? Matteo. I, I like James. James is a great guy, real nice guy, but he's got a little bit of his, like, cult following of oil painters at this point. And uh, I've taught some classes, like, at, at uh, Adepticon. And they're like, I use oils, because James, and it's like, oh, oils aren't going to be very good for this effect, so... Oils do one thing, like, oils blend great, right? You can make r silky smooth blends with oils. But you know what oils do really bad? This would be a pain in the ass with oils. Oh, you want to paint some thin little lines? Good luck. So it's all, everything, everything about painting. You know, when you're talking about kind of paints, people ask me, what, what paints do you use? Well, I'll tell you that no matter what, uh, without the knowledge and stuff of the tools, 
just because you use the same paints as me doesn't mean you're going to paint like me. Um, doesn't mean you're going to mix colors the same, right? Like, there's a lot that goes in to painting. And the exact tools you use Each tool has a purpose. I've seen Angel Geraldes do some of that stuff with an airbrush, so I'm like, nope, not happening. Like, I wouldn't even try. Ain't happening. That's maybe true, Mini Mancer, but it certainly isn't going to make my life easier. Hi, Richard. That's uh, why I'm one one of these days. Yeah, good a good one. brawn and a very Russian sounding name. Sorry, man. Vadim Nimic Vadim Vadim Nikonov Vadim Nik Vadim Nikonov. Well, I'm glad you're here. How are you not certain how you got here? Huh? I'm curious how you got here. Because it helps me. X Braun is a Transformer. Transformers! So here's the thing about Transformers. My buddy Dave, who some of you might know as Ice Cream Dave, or I don't know, just Dave. Anytime we go on a road trip to like Adepticon or something, we always listen to the, what is it, 1985? 19, I don't remember what year the movie came out. The original animated uh, Transformers soundtrack. It is tradition. <laughs> Achilles Rain and Ikea. Hello. Thank you. Welcome.
Well, thanks, Scotian. Only two months. Is that right? Two months till Transformers. That's what it is. So you got the touch, dun, dun, dun. you got the power. D demonic. Hello, welcome. When our hair's breaking loose. It might be one of the best movie soundtracks ever made. We'll go out on a limb and say that. Hi, right, Mural. Uh, I just want to remind you to ensure you pre-order your pre-release pack so you can guarantee your spot and, and stand punishes the guy who did touch and dare. Yeah, I'm... Wait, dare as in dare? No. Well, there's dare to be stupid. Dare to be stupid is the Weird Al song on the soundtrack. But yeah, Stan Bush wrote Did he do that song too? I know there's two people. Boo -doo -dee 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 -dee. Dare to be stupid. The soundtrack has Devo on it. There's some there's some parts of that movie like I can't forget. Guilty or innocent. Innocent. Spare me this mockery of justice. So, so are you using different shades of blue to do the non-metallics? Yes, different shades of blues and grays, right? Because I want it to look so that we end up with a, a sky reflection, right? Well, thanks, Mural. Don't be stupid. Nineteen eighty six. 
Yeah, there was that one, and then there was the the G.I. Joe movie that had Sergeant Slaughter in it. In the BET. Which was like the something energy transmitter. Thanks, X Broad. What, was, what did it stand for? The something energy transmitter. I don't know. That's, that movie's got one of my favorite lines in it, too. Yeah, there we go. Cobra, la, 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 la. But at the beginning, they had the BET. Um, and there's there's a line in that movie where, because Cobra Commander turns into an actual like snake monster, and he's talking to the broadcast energy transmitter. Uh. And he, he's some one of the Joes saves him. I can't remember who. And he's just like, was a man. And it's like one of my favorite, just stupid lines. And my roommate and I say it way too much to each other. Was a man. Wait a minute, did you do Nisak the Totem Huntress? Sorry to go off tough. I love that paint shop. Nisak the to the Totem Huntress. I did the t I did a Totem Huntress, the the like 75 millimeter one from Privateer Press. The like and she's back there. Somewhere. She's in there. Nisak. Or uh, Sawari Nico. Well, thanks. Do -do stupid. That's, it's so funny when you hear a voice actor. So, who is it? One of the characters... Oh, the Mahler twins in Invincible are... What is his name? They are done by the same voice actor who did Saravok in the original Baldur's Gate. Not Baldur's Gate 3. In Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. And I've played that game so many times... And all I can, anytime the Mahler twins talk, all I can hear is Saravok. Perceptive for an old man. Which I don't know why they didn't get him back for Baldur's Gate 3. Like. The guy's doing work. 
Can't be that expensive. Spoiler if you haven't played Boulder Skate 3, but the Sarabox in it. I will be the last, and you will go first. Oh, I love, I love Boulder's Game 1 and 2, you guys. Let me just tell you. Greatest games ever made. Top video game ever. <laughs> oh, the dirge, the dark urge. I haven't done a dark. I did a regular playthrough. I really had fun with it. Uh, I might wait until they do an expansion to do a Dark Urge playthrough or something. But yeah, the Dark... the It's a good game. I had a few... I would say minor complaints about it. Um, but overall, I thought it was excellent. Kakamish, thank you. Do you still have your first miniature ever? Not my first ever. I have some pretty old ones. They're put away right now. Um, I don't have my first ever. My first ever was a Death Guard miniature. I sold that army. Uh, I could find a pretty old one though. Could show you guys some improvement. Let's see what I got. Uh, here's a really early. So this is this is a pretty early. Signar model. It's pretty bad. Nemo? My first ever bust? Nemo? There's a little dip, slight difference. Yeah, I mean, even, so let's compare it to something more fair, right? Because, you know, there's a big difference between comparing, like, busts to seven to 32 millimeter figures. So, Nemo versus a Space Marine. That I've painted more recently.
Do I have a big one? What is that? What do you mean? I have a big one what? How big? I mean, this is, you know, the size of my hand. Or not even, like, the compared to my hand, I mean. The biggest figure I have is Bane, which is, like, the, the one I won Monty with. And it's pretty large, but it's not, like, huge. Still a miniature. I don't like taking this guy out. He barely fits on camera. Uh, go higher. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this is, like, probably the biggest figure I've ever painted. Do I make these figures from scratch, or do I just paint them? No, I just paint them. Uh, a friend of mine sculpted this. Uh, I did sculpt the, the ba like, the base. So I sculpted the base, he sculpted the figure, and I painted it. All right, you can go away now. And it looks like an insane amount of time. It was a lot of time. It was probably like 200 hours or something. I think about 200. Seems right. You could have painted a Bane Blood Huff in the amount of time, you know, and then literally the hundreds of models that you needed to practice on before painting Bane. But yeah, there. He he was about two hundred ish hours total, I would guess. All right, let's finish up the back of this. I've been painting minis for like 15 years, I guess, something like that. That always seems to be my rough estimation, but painting seriously since 2017, and by serious I mean a lot. Like, every day. Like, many, many, many hours every day. Well, not literally every day, but like almost every single day. But I think people can improve, like, really fast now. It's about where you put your effort... This is this one is yes.
You look at your paint desk every day. Well, that's not going to get you there. And I have people ask, like, what does it take to get to my level or whatever? It's just dedication, man. It's dedication and serious practice. And it's not for everyone either, you know? The truth of it is, you can get good, right? You can get pretty good. Hey, eat, sleep, breathe, painting, yeah, basically. Uh, but, like, not everybody's going to be LeBron James. Like, not calling myself LeBron James, just saying... That, like, the amount of dedication required to reach the highest level of anything is, like, sometimes obsessive. Or I would say it is obsessive. Is the paint acrylic, how do you prevent shipping? I haven't gotten into the hobby because I don't know what's right supplies. It is acrylic. Uh, you prime the model, which helps the, the paint adhere to the model. And I don't typically have a problem with chipping. Chipping was a bigger problem back when miniatures were made out of metal. Um, now that they're made out of like plastic and resin, it's not, doesn't, it's not as much of an issue with with the chipping. Uh, another thing I'll say about painting is I love you guys hanging out and watching, you know? I, I appreciate it. It's cool. I think you're you're learning things and but no amount of watching tutorials is ever going to replace, like, actual time with the brush. Like... Yeah, I, I get it, you know, the, there's a lot of good and free, there's a lot of not so good information, but there's a lot of really good information out there, and it can be, uh, yeah, it can be, it can be difficult.
But yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good information out there. Yeah, you know, online there's way more online resources now than when I started miniature painting, and that like that wasn't that long ago, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Wasn't that long ago that I started painting. Um And now there's just so much. I'm going to paint her little band in the back. Just leather, I guess. I don't know if I want to do leather. Maybe I'll make it a red, like a reddish tone. Talent is your ability to take in new information quickly. That's what I think talent is. There's definitely a difference between like talent and savantism or whatever, however you say it. Hello. No, no, I mean, I, I, I do actually think that the, like, talent is a thing. Like, but it doesn't matter how talented you are if you don't apply yourself uh, some. Like, hard work can beat out talent. Talent just can make the hard work go a little faster. If you're a natural at something, you know? Show stopped. Show stopper 81 Ohio. Hello. Like, you can't look at someone like Jonas, who was in the stream earlier. He's 17. He paints like quite good. I mean, he's not like, you know, top, top, like award winning painter, but he's 17 years old, has been painting for like two years or something. And he's like kicking ass. So obviously the kid's got some talent. It's just like, how much can he now take what he's, the head start he's got and apply himself going forward. Makes sense. I think so. That's what I believe anyways. Double egg salad. Hello, welcome. Just like some people will be genetically gifted athletes, you know. <laughs> but they still just can't eat Oreos all day and not work out like...
That ain't how it works. The talent discussion is always interesting. Of course, I absolutely think it's a real thing, but I, uh, but it's also only one piece of the puzzle, and so often people use it to be a dismissive. Oh, I wish I was as talented as you, Eric. Well, flies all the years and hours of practice. Yeah, I think talent is aptitude. I mean, I learn by myself. I think that's changing. And Texas isn't that far from places like Las Vegas, where you have uh, a now opening workshop space with, with lots of instructors and stuff, and there's a ton of information online. Like earlier, we were talking about the, the fighter from Mark, because I'm going to start painting that one next week, uh, and that figure just comes with a tutorial like where he explains the entire painting process and it's full of a lot of like useful information Yeah, talent might get you started a bit earlier, but it turns out, uh, yeah. It's just how it is. Las Vegas Verco's fault? Who is that guy? That's Gary, man. Think of Gary like the modern day Medici for miniature painters. Uh, my main problem I have with painting, not saying I'm anywhere near a good grade, is red-green colorblind. If I have a problem with this. Well, let me tell you what, I'm teaching a class at Adepticon, and if it goes well, I'll probably teach the same class at Nova on uh, color theory for colorblind people. I am not personally colorblind, but we have quite a few members of the Discord that are, and I'm working with them on developing a uh, kind of system that can that can help with the color blindness. One of my favorite paintings ever made is Guernica, and it has no red and green in it. Sounds like an excuse. Uh, random question. Eric, what type of metal rod do you use to pin the bust? One eighth inch brass want rod. You just cut it with a saw and then you can kind of snap it off and use a metal file to like clean up the, the burrs on the end. But yeah. One eighth inch brass rod. You can buy it pretty cheap on Amazon. Comes in a pack. You get like a couple feet of it. Probably like 
four feet of it for like 10 bucks or something. I'll last you a lot of bus. Uh, does anyone use Vallejo and have an issue with it separating on the palette so quickly? Is that normal ones? No. I mean, some colors are going to separate faster than others. What might be happening is you might have a, too, a little too much moisture in your in your palette. Um, like here, this yellow. You can see this yellow kind of started to separate a little bit. But yeah, you might be putting too much water. Let's try and just finish up a little bit of this blending. Just want to soften a few things. All right? How do we make a really make these really soft transitions just by slowly building up layers, layer after layer after layer until you get a a nice smooth okay. and why because I want this to be smooth not everything I want to be smooth but this kind of satin effect I'm going for I am looking for a, a smooth finish Yeah, it's not unusual for paints to separate on your palette, like, after a day, on a wet palette, like, if you close it and, like, leave for the day. Uh, that's pretty normal. Yeah, 20 minutes is pretty fast. You might be, I think you might be uh, putting too much water in your wet palette. Try, try maybe a little less. Or maybe try uh, using two sheets of paper instead of one. That might help. A lot of a lot of wet palette uh, comes down to like where you live, how much general moisture is in the air. Real Nicaprio, hello. All of those things can have an effect on how fast your uh, your paints get hydrated. This one? <laughs> There's a little tiny smiley face.
All right, and let's see. Do a little bit of blending on the other sleeve. Not that it matters that much because you can barely see it. Most of this one is blocked by the sword anyways. And then I want to add just a few subtle highlights to the back of the sleeve here. Just to give it some shape. And I'll blend between those two. Right, something like that. Okay. All right. Let's see how we feel. Everything kind of assembled. There might be a few little touch ups. Like I said, I have to do post stream, but want to see how she looks just in in general you know okay ta-da yeah like maybe even do some work here Cool. Guys, have fun with this one. Enjoy. Enjoyed it. Ready for the next one. Yeah, I want to make it clear because I said like this was me trying to be more refined like there is stuff that I'm gonna come in and like this crap down here like I'm gonna paint that I'm gonna paint all uh, like I will fix some of this to find some of these edges I will clean up these areas I will probably clean like that up and there there are some small little things that you know I could spend another six hours so two more streams worth of of painting but it would just be like you guys watching me do tiny tiny adjustments and you've seen you know you saw me paint the face for six hours so uh you know what it takes to reach this level of refinement so you just have to do that everywhere right Dresden, Dresden Dark. Thanks for following. Okay, so. Yeah. And then, like I said, next week we're going to start on the MMA fighter from, from Mark. Mark. 
Mr. Masklands. Oh. I'm gonna uh, putty the the missing tooth. I'm gonna give him a mouth guard. I just have to fill in a couple little gaps, but. Yeah, we're going to work on this guy starting next week. Uh, if you want, like I said, if you want to follow along, check out, check out the, uh, you can, you can order your, order a copy of this guy from, from Mark. Supports a, a small manufacturer and a general good dude. And you also get a, a tutorial by him along with the figure. Salad bum and disguised. Thanks thanks for following. And Rez Renee, thanks for following. Yeah, we're gonna have fun doing some tattoos and stuff on this guy. It's going to be a lot more skin, but this time it'll be more muscles and stuff. She was just a face. He's going to be more muscular. Muscular chur. Got a couple little injection parts to clean and stuff, but let's see if I can this store. Oh, actually, let's go to, let's just go to the shop. Let's link the Shopify directly. Boom. Boom. All right. Let's see who can we can rain. Oh, I'm going to end the stream here. No. Or not end the stream. End the 